I'm going to talk about a LARP I made in 2010 called the Bader Meinhof Experiment. I made it together with the two friends of mine, Evan Tempte and Marcus Irgens. You might meet them at Knutepunkt at times. We've uh, done um, two runs in a realistic film kind of style, and um, three on the runs of the runs was in a black box. That was thanks to two Swedes, Gabriel Widing and Ebba Petren, who, who actually talked me into doing my realistic LARP in a theater. I hated the idea, but, that, but that's why I'm here, I guess, because we can compare the two different styles. <coughs> the game, uh, yeah, it's also in the LARP Factory um, book, which you will get later this week. This is a cool photo of me in the game. <laughs> Balder Meinhof uh, was a group of young extremist radicals and uh, some uh, of the other speakers wants me to call them terrorists so you understand what they were doing. They were young, they were living in Europe, it was in the beginning of the European Union, at that time called the EEC. <coughs> they decided that uh, some capitalists should die, especially the ones in Germany who they knew were from a Nazi, uh, I mean, in Germany, in the 60s, in the 70s, it was a crazy different environment than today. So these guys decided to form an urban guerrilla, and I made a game about them. Why? Because it was a cool movie coming out in 2009 or something about it. And um, comparable maybe to some other terrorist groups. These guys also become rock stars among the leftist communist community in uh, Germany at that time. So I wanted to sort of explore how these, how these uh, things work. <clears throat> the story, exact the situation in the game is that they bombed the, the Western German embassy. Yeah, 70s. Germany was two countries, East and West. Yeah, one communist in the East on capitalist in the West. So um, after the first four of the members of um, Bademanov and a few others were in prison in Germany, there were different other young people trying to get them out by kidnapping and uh, occupying different buildings and they did that in Sweden. So we wanted to make a story about how some of these Germans come to Norway to recruit communists like Maoist, which is a different kind of <laughs> leftist groups, but just to, just to explore the differences between political activism and terrorism, and where do you put um, the line. <coughs> so then we could not only have terrorists and communists and hippies and anarchists, <coughs> we also needed the police. <coughs> so uh, we, um, we have two spaces. One flat, which is the police, and one flat, which is uh, the collective. <coughs> um, I worked in uh, the broadcasting company of Norway those days, so I had lots of microphones. So we put actual microphones in my flat, and all the people playing in the, the communist collective, they were like actually surveillanced by the police, and in the neighbor flat across the hallway because me and Eirik Fatland was living in two different flats, so we just had to... <laughs> so uh, in Eirik's uh, flat there will be police people sitting and actually listening in and then deciding who of those people in there are the kind of communist youth political people and who of them are the, the terrorists and where is the bomb, do they have guns, do they not, stuff like that, and then the police would have to decide when the game escalates, they have to decide when to move in and stop them. <clears throat> yeah, and it's a load so different elements we put into the game. I mean, originally it was an idea of cops and robbers. It's like somebody plays the police, somebody plays the band. It's kind of uh, basic structures. Um, yeah, it's all in the book. It's a long list. I, I don't think... I will do the main design points, which is interesting, I guess, and I'll tell you more about all the different stuff we put into it later. 
parallel characters. For the first run, we had uh, eight hours. That meant that we could, because the whole story takes three hours, three and a half. They could have a break and all the communist collective people would then play the police and then the police also would play the communists. And, then, and we do the whole situation once more. And um, we also found out they were convenient to have similar personalities. We didn't need to redesign the personalities because the, like the charismatic violent extremist could be the very uh, manipulative military strategist of the military police hunting the terrorists. And, and um, it fits very well. And we had the, the police lawyer and the, the, the ideo ideologist of the um, communists, also the same. They had a book. The communists had uh, Karl Marx uh, uh, book, uh, Kapital, and uh, the lawyer had the law. But they still just open a book and they would improvise. The law says yada yada, or Karl Marx says yada yada, and everybody else would go, oh, so that's the law, that's the rules. So it's kind of the same functions on the different sides of the wall. Yeah, and also the hippie was really like attentive and listening and diplomatic on one side, and the and the police psychologist were the same also. <clears throat> yeah, now to the really interesting part. So first we did it like a 360 degree uh, filmatic realistic style and then we moved into the theater, what happens with the um, story and the form. The first thing is very practical. It's very easy to listen to people speaking when you are on the same stage, when you have these uh, headphones trying to listen in to someone with microphones actually realistically, it's very, very hard. And for LARPers, not very... Well, they are, they are good at eavesdropping, but not at like analyzing what people are saying, but because they talk all the time, so they can't... The, the people listening in won't hear what is going on in the other flat because all the other guys on your group is discussing something else. So when we, when we put it on the um, stage, people would be more attentive of how much space and sound I would take. Because if the police started arguing too much, it will interfere with the game of the communists. So then people tend to be more attentive to each other, listening in. And to help the players do that, we uh, applied the islands of light. That means that if two groups start talking too much at the same time, so it becomes chaotic, we turn off the light in one of the rooms, and then those people are uh, instructed on beforehand to be silent. And then you can sort of, in a subtle way, control how the game flows as a game master. So you just sit by the lights and just choose. No, the communists are talking too much, shut up. Police needs to discuss, lights on. Uh, now it's interesting to see an interrogation scene in the interrogation room, light up. Yes. And sometimes the police chief would go like, are we already there? And you go, yeah, now you need to arrest someone. <laughs> Don't wait. Yes, I already mentioned this. <coughs> yep, this was a slide which was supposed to do that. Yeah, I'll, I'll think I just fast forward to the most problematic design thing with this uh, game. Because it's kind of a fun game to do with a very serious team. And we got loads of guns and uniforms and like slogans and all this. And in the ending, the police are supposed to sort of raid the whole flat and arrest the right people. And there is going to be some kind of action uh, negotiation. Some people might uh, be taken hostage if they want to 
go and talk to the police and um, others might hide away in a corner and there will be shooting and stuff. And uh, I think the only run I'm really happy with it was the first one because we had a smoke machine in my flat. So when the police says, now the tear gas is coming, I just shoot with uh, the smoke machine. So the whole living room in my flat was just covered in smoke. Also made the police come, so don't do that <laughs> later. <laughs> but um, um, uh, the smoke machine made the, the players not see each other, so they were moving slower. That was the most interesting part, because on stage, people run towards each other in a much faster way, so they pace the ending action differently. And they stop talking, because they want to sort of uh, start fighting with each other. And they, it's not a game about like winning the final battle, it's a game about choosing to use violence. And when the violence starts, it's sort of the interesting parts end. So, um, I try when we are on stage to sort of go for blackout, to just take all the lights away and play some sound. But sometimes I also think it's exciting to see who dies. <laughs> so, so then I take a little bit up and then down. Yes. Um, yeah, because... Is it a game? Or is it a LARP? Or is it a story? I don't know. It's an experience, I guess. But I know that uh, the people who's been to those runs where I took the lights and did not wait to see what happened, they are more emotionally loaded when they come out of the game. That's interesting. Yeah. I still got some minutes. Three minutes. As, okay, uh, that's a lot. Um, then I can do show, uh, tell you about one meta technique we use for starting. Uh, the diff we have three acts, three parts. It's like a TV series. It's like one, one before the break. Then we have a commercial break, and then we have one uh, more episode, and then we have a commercial break, and then we have the final episode. Uh, I usually go, I didn't do this the first time. Yeah, I did it the first time, but not uh, the two other times. But now in the book, kind of what we do when we do Bader Meinhof, we do this. I place people in different situations. Can one uh, pe person come up here? Two people. Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> so uh, this, is, uh, this part of the stage is the, um, the kitchen. Uh, of the communist collective. So you will stand uh, with, uh, with your back to the audience. Because, uh, and you do my dishes. It, it was in my flat and I always had dishwashing to do, so it would be a part of the story. <laughs> uh, and you, you stand here because someone is coming through the door. They start at the door. That's the, the bottom line of the German crew. Uh, but you you have just said something to her, so you look at her, but you will, your body is towards the door, right? And you turn yourself to answer, and you look angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I just take the lights down, play some music, and then when we put the light up, something starts to happen. That's the frozen moment strategy or something. I don't think it's a meta technique. It's it's a directing choice. <coughs> yes. So why make a game about the seventies? What you told me one minute. <laughs> okay, this is my punchline. Why make a LARP about terrorism in the seventies in Europe? Because I think. It's not, it's important to remember, it's not so long ago that in this, in my country, in, in the sort of 
civilized capitalist Western world. There were young people wanting to kill people, and they did. They became murderers. And what happened when they got in jail? A lot of new young people signed up and started kidnapping other people in tribute to the first ones. And I think that's a historic lesson which is uh, useful today too. Thank you.